Hey, welcome back. This morning we're looking at Exodus chapter 2 now, verses 1 and 2. Let's read it out. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a daughter of Levi. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was beautiful, she hid him for three months. So a man and a woman have a child. He's going to ultimately be named Moses. We're coming to that. And the mother is noted in particular as, as making this thought about her child. My child is a tov child. Good. But at the, at the end of Genesis 1, God looks at all that he's made and he says, oh, it's good. She looks at her child and she says, this is a tov child. He's beautiful. He's good. There's just, he's just good. And of course, all mothers kind of think they're, they're, their little children are good, right? And that's the way she feels about this little baby. What a precious child he must have been. But the situation is terrible. The situation is uh, this child is, is doomed to be to death under the decrees and diktats that are coming from the government in Egypt. So, yeah, quite a situation to be in. And where's dad? Where's dad? He doesn't show up too much here. He, he showed up, uh, I guess, on the night that the child was conceived. But, and, you know, not, not to be too hard on him, he's probably out there making bricks and getting beaten by the, by the Egyptians. So things are just rough all around, and here's this young, uh, young mother with her child. So she determines she's going to do something kind of crazy here. She's going to try to hide this child. And she carries on. And how do you hide a child for three months? And yet that's what we're told. That as the scripture goes on, she hides the child successfully. And each day it lives. It's another day further on. It hasn't been cast into the river yet. It hasn't been, been drowned yet. But it's almost an impossible situation to be in. You know, God has designed humans so that we have these very strong social connections with each other. But, but in our day, some of those, some of those connections are pretty, are pretty limited. Uh, a lot of times, you know, in the, in the time of Moses, you know, there was very strong connections between children and parents and grandparents. And many generations often lived in the same household. Today, oh, mom and dad, they live 2,000 miles away. Uh, you know, mom's in the nursing home 1,000 miles away. You know, and, and, and things are very discreet. If we send our kids, we put them in a yellow can, they take them to school and teach them crazy stuff. And a lot of parents don't care. I've known a lot of school teachers and a lot of them have, have been surprised to learn how little some of the parents cared about their children, what they were learning in school. But anyway, here's a mother who is, is caring and she's gonna try to do something about the situation, but it's an incredible situation. How can she ever, how can this child even, even dare even begin to survive? She feels that unless she takes drastic measures, something even worse is going to happen. And this is an intelligent woman. She's, she's willing to think outside the box. She's, she recognizes she might need to do something really, really, uh, really unusual. And she thinks about this, and she's definitely been thinking during this time, trying to figure out, how can I save my child? And I think we underestimate what God will do in the mind of a consecrated mother. But in this woman's case, she is... She is thinking it out, and she comes up with something that's just, just so bizarre, like you couldn't even make it into a movie. She comes up with something that's so uh, amazing, and yet was not God's spirit perhaps leading her? Now keep in mind that uh, this little baby has got a brother who's three years older than he is, and then there's a sister who's older than he is. It must be a period of years older, actually. And so maybe Aaron was born just before this big crackdown, and Miriam, of course, was born before Aaron. We don't really know a lot. We know we know that the, the timing of Aaron, that Aaron is three years older than Moses. And Moses is born perhaps right at the time of the strictest decree. You know, the devil kind of has a way of making things work out that way. He, he, he put, brings in the tight things, the difficult, the hardest pieces, right when God's doing something. And, you know, you could throw up your hands and say, look, I've got two beautiful children, Aaron and Miriam, and I guess this one just is going to die because, you know, oh, well, that's not, that's not the way this lady takes it. Not at all. She's determined to find some way, if there can be a way, she's determined that there would be some way to save this child. And that takes us to tomorrow morning. We'll see you tomorrow morning.